Okay, good afternoon again. I'm not sure if anyone will watch this one. I'm hoping that definitely one person will watch this. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I did another, another video uh, last week and uh, posted it out there. Got a nice response, got a really positive response, especially from peers and people who I um, really respect. And one of those individuals who I highly respect is a young man called Jassif Bron. Jassif Bron, who asked me a question. He said, what was I referring to uh, when I mentioned in one of my posts uh, something called NCCB, uh, Natural Neural Chemical Balancing. And uh, I'd like to explain to him, hopefully, and anybody else who would like to listen. So this is, I'm not an expert in this, this is just stuff that I've researched myself, but I'm highly interested in. And the reason I'm so interested in this because if I am trying to teach anyone, whether it's a young person or someone in further education, I genuinely, genuinely want to make sure that I'm communicating with them in such a way that um, I'm literally am knocking on that little door to their head and saying, hi, would you want to let me in? Because I've got some information to give to you. But I've got to knock the correct way and as they open the door before they let me in I've got to communicate in the right way so they do let me in and they feel comfortable with me so they sit me down hope to make me a cup of tea some biscuits and then I really start that communication process so I'm highly interested in something called I've kind of phrased I've added in this natural neural chemical balancing it's not new it's kind of a culmination of other research projects that I've done for example, I looked at what just natural chemical balancing, it was always around diet, um, foods we eat, and what foods contain certain chemicals that go in that can stimulate other chemicals in the body, and of course within the, the neuro center or the brain. Please bear with me. So I'm just gonna just focus on a few of the chemicals that are highly used in our brain. Let's go straight to serotonin, first of all. Now, as you well know, serotonin, this is the one that promotes feelings of happiness, feelings of well-being. It's a great chemical, you know. Um, how do you release and how is it produced? Well, things that help release serotonin, the things that make us happy. Have you ever been somewhere and you've smelt something or you've heard a tune and it's completely whisked you back, just literally whisked you back straight to a, a, a really nice, memory whether it's a childhood memory or a memory somewhere else and all of a sudden you get this overwhelming feeling of oh it's a great memory happiness fantastic so you know bringing back memories really nice positive memories can help produce this serotonin and that can actually help produce feelings of happiness and well-being serotonin is also great as well you know when you're feeling when people humans are starting to feel depressed if more of it is produced it can actually help with depression so we know that we know this let's go to let's go to dopamine dopamine has always been known as the, the, the pleasure the, the, the pleasure hormone the pleasure chemical um, in regards to working with children well what are we talking about with that in regards to pleasure it's the reward systems it's if I do this I get that uh, and that's really important for children. You know, it means they will focus on a project. It, it helps them focus. It helps them keep online because there is a goal, there is a reward. But it has to be something powerful enough to make them want to do this, to stay on track. What is that reward at the end? And when they get it and when they strive for it, the dopamine is released. Boom. So that, that's great because we know that dopamine then, the production of that, making sure a child or whoever it is, uh, uh, an adult, has to stay on track and focus and complete a task if they're really focused on that reward dopamine is being produced that means they're staying focused let's jump to epinephrine and norepinephrine epinephrine norepinephrine i think i've pronounced norepinephrine right i do apologize this is the one that's released under stressful situations fight and flight responses something scary happens oh, i'm really scared epinephrine norepinephrine are released Kind of calms you down helps with attentiveness by the way think about this attentiveness because obviously you're stressed so it can calm you down help you calm others down when it's produced can also help check this out with learning for example child let's say or an adult never been stung by a stinging nettle before walks up to a stinging nettle touches it ow wow 
pain, epinephrine produced. Fantastic, that really hurt. I'm never touching that again. I visually look at it. I look at its form that is taken into my brain, cemented, stinging nettle sting. That's a stinging nettle. We know that the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine can aid learning. Now I'm not saying, what, did you say we should harm children and scare children to help them learn? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I, what I am saying, if you can put them in a situation that sometimes is fun, but they are just slightly out of their comfort zone, it can help. Okay, let's go to um, oxytoxin. Oxytocin, oxytocin, I do apologize, oxytocin. Really important in ladies and women. It's one of the chemicals, sorry, hormones that help the, the womb contract during pregnancy. But it's also a really important one uh, for helping in social interaction, building group memories, uh, helping humans to socialize and how to act within social groups. Now I've just told you some very basic stuff about those chemicals or hormone, hormones sorry, that we know that are in the brain and we know what they do and we know how to stimulate them. Remember what I just said just now, serotonin. We could be they could be stimulated by recalling positive memories, positive memories, positive activities, positive situations, positive lessons, fun lessons, fun activities. Do you know what else can produce serotonin? Vitamin D. Listen to this. It is the one that produces happiness. Where do we get vitamin D from? Outside. This linked to my last video. We need to get outside more. We need to be soaking up more of that kind of vitamin D. It can help. We all know this. And then consider how all the other ones can be produced. So I told you about epinephrine and norepinephrine. Under stress levels, they can be produced, but also under it, it helps with attentiveness. You know, if you can just bring people outside their safety zones, make them want to push themselves more, so we can help that be produced. Oxytocin, social, enabling people to become more social through activities that they feel comfortable with, or sometimes they don't feel comfortable with, as I said earlier. So we know this. And I'll tell you who else knows it, gaming companies. Don't get me wrong, I love gaming and I think it's great, but just get this. There is a game right now, a highly, highly addictive game right now. Many, many people play it. Many children, many adults, many older people. It's the one, you know, where you have to do special dances. You win special dances, you know, well, I can't do it. You have special different uniforms, and you go in, you parachute in, you fly around. Now, I'm picking on that one particularly because it's so in your face at the minute. Check this out. They, when they design those games, this is what they will do. They have a specialist unit of psychologists and specialist unit of consultants and researchers that often go and visit addiction clinics and they focus on what makes things addictive, what things makes a human being want to do this, this, this all the time. Very simply, they come up with, well, hang on a minute, let's think about this. If we can produce something in the person's brain which makes them want to stay on track and want to get to a goal, to the next level, to get this thing in this game, to get that thing in this game, we'll hook them in. So those games are designed specifically to really, really, really interact with the dopamine in humans' brains, the reward drug. Think about a game, how it's played. Think about how it's designed. You know, it, these people have literally poured millions into making sure that they can design these games to be so highly addicted that this, this human wants more of it. They would live on that because they can get the dopamine rushes get these goals, get these rewards, get to the next level, get to this. And then they go a step further. They start interacting with the oxytocin, the social side. You see, because these games are social now, you can put earphones on, you can talk to someone, many people. So you've got these dopamine rushes and you're socializing as you're playing and you're getting dopamine rushes, oxytocin rushes. But here's the problem with that. 
if you're only getting oxytocin rushes from those social interactions, your synapses and your brain kind of links and bridges might only form in a way that you can only socialize in those kind of ways. Are you still with me? Now those gaming companies can do that. They can send out these psychologists, they can send out these consultants and researchers, they can pour millions in. We can't do that in education. We just haven't got the money. But what I am saying, going back to answering Miss Jess, Mr. Sorry, Joseph Braun, his question, is as an in instructor, teacher, can I call myself a teacher? I think it's, it's like, can you call yourself an artist? Only the children call me a teacher because if I teach them. But if I am gonna call myself a teacher, then I've got to really understand the physiology and the physical and the mental and everything about the person who stood in front of me that I'm just about to try and teach something, an activity or something. So therefore I'm saying, I believe with time that you can put together a bespoke lesson, session, plan, project for individuals or groups. Now, I have done this myself. I have put together specific bespoke programs considering natural neural chemical balance and techniques for large groups and for specific individuals. And all I have to do is find out about them first. I find out if I am going to try and produce dopamine in them, the reward system, to get them focused, well, what, were, what rewards would they like? It's not sometimes always going to be a smiley face or a star. It might be something else. That works for thousands, millions of children, but sometimes not for the individual. What reward, what thing would they strive to get to to enable me to get them to complete a task that helps them through their educational journey. I believe you can do this, and I have done this. With larger groups, you can find out about the individuals of those groups and tailor make projects where you could enable oxytocin, social interaction, social interaction hormone, to be produced and get them to socially interact, not just learning how to socially interact through gaming systems, because we're losing this, we're losing this face-to-face -face communication, we're losing, you know, we're supposed to communicate through our body, through movement, we're supposed to, language is, is, is beautiful, but language is this as well, movement, body, emphasizing, facial expressions, we could lose that. So, I know I'm waffling, but I just, so to answer your question, Mr. Jessif Braun, if you want any more information on this, or anyone, just just give me a private email, uh, a text, uh, you can get me hold of, uh, get me hold on Messenger. Uh, any thoughts on this would be absolutely amazing, so please send me your thoughts. So just to leave it with you again, this video was specifically talking about what we call, what I call, I've coined natural neural chemical balancing and it's through very specific activities which can balance out very specific chemicals and hormones in a child adult person's mind brain that can help them with possible you know behaviors um probably if they've got any negative feelings help them with negative feelings understanding those feelings negative emotions trying to produce positive emotions um, and just trying to enable a teacher to interact with that child on a very, very in-depth level. Okay, so over to you, your thoughts, please. Thank you.